What's up guys, Jay Vincent here. Today's video, I'm just gonna read through some questions submitted on my Instagram profile. Give me a follow at underscore J underscore Vincent. I post a lot of good reels, content, and I do Q and A in my Instagram story. So in today's video, I'm just gonna read through some of the questions that were submitted through my Instagram story, give you a very short format response to a lot of these common fitness questions. So the first question is, is there any scientific evidence showing that arms are weak links during compound movements? The short answer to that is no. The reason a lot of people think your arms are smaller muscle groups or weak links in compound movement is because there's simply more sensory input from your extremities. There's more sensory nerve endings in your arms and your legs and not as many in the muscle groups in your torso. So you'll notice a lot of times you'll feel your forearms burning, you'll feel your biceps burning, you'll feel your shoulders burning, and that leads you to believe that your arms are weak links in a lot of these compound movements. A lot of people also think that your arms contain smaller muscle groups than your chest, your lats, and other muscle groups in your back, and this is a myth. If you were to surgically remove your biceps, your triceps, your deltoids, and compare them in mass and weight to your chest and your lats and other large muscle groups, you would find that all the muscle groups in your upper body are very similar in weight and mass and volume, and that the muscle groups in your arms are not actually smaller muscle groups. They just appear smaller because they wrap around your arms instead of being spread out across your torso. So that is just a myth. I wanna lose fat, but I'm always hungry. Are there any tips for fighting cravings and suppressing appetite? Yeah, the best tip is eat nutrient-dense, calorie-deficient foods. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if you look at a donut, that is gonna be calorie-dense and nutrient-deficient. It doesn't have very many nutrients in it. It's high in carbohydrates, high in calories, high in sugar, low in protein and low in all the good nutrients that our body needs in order to be healthy, build muscle and stay fit. And it's very high in calories because it's dense in sugar and dense in carbohydrates. So you're not getting much out of like a bagel or a donut. That is a calorie dense, nutrient deficient food choice. So my advice is to choose nutrient dense, calorie deficient food choices. Things like green vegetables, animal protein, like grilled chicken or, or grilled steak. Now these foods are gonna give you a huge amount of bang for your buck in terms of nutrition and they're relatively low in calories to the food choices most people select like bagels, sandwiches, cereals, things like that. So if all your meals are centered around these kinds of foods, you're gonna be eating a lot more food volume and it's really gonna help with your appetite. And despite this higher food volume, it's gonna be lower in calories. So I write these kind of diet guides for my students all the time in my coaching. If you want help designing a diet guide that's easy to stick to, is gonna help you lose a ton of fat and build a ton of muscle without driving you crazy, click the link in the description below and book a free call with me and learn about my coaching program. I've had clients get ridiculous results with basic diet guides and basic diet tips that I teach them in coaching. Are CrossFit workout routines bad? And if so, why? So when we're choosing an exercise routine, Keep in mind that anything that is done intensely and progressively over a long enough period of time is gonna be extremely similar in our strength improvements, our cardiovascular improvements, and our muscle size improvements. So when choosing an exercise program, we're not only after what is effective, we also have to consider other factors like time and safety. So if everything is relatively similar in the long run, in terms of the outcome, in terms of strength, muscle growth, et cetera, then we also wanna choose something that is safe and something that is efficient. And CrossFit is neither of these. CrossFit is not efficient and it is extremely dangerous. That is why CrossFit is bad. It's not like CrossFit is ineffective, it's very effective, but it's gonna take you a lot of time. It's gonna beat up your joints in the process, which is why it is bad. But in terms of the effectiveness, it's not bad. It's just very inefficient and very dangerous. Should one's diet be different on training days 
versus rest days. Well, theoretically, you probably could tolerate more calories and more protein, etc., on your training day, and you know, you probably should. But the thing is, these are the minutia details that keep people from sticking to fitness. When you start splitting hairs and measuring more calories on training days and less on rest days, this is the kind of stuff that makes fitness overcomplicated and the reason a lot of people stop. What you want is you want your training approach and your diet approach to be very simple. That way you can implement it into your life and not have it interfere with other aspects of your life. Focusing on small details like more calories on training days versus rest days, these are the kind of things that make workouts and diets hard to stick to and make it far more likely for you to quit them because it's hard to fit this minutia detail into your life. It just overcomplicates things. And in the long run, eating more calories or more protein or whatever on your training days versus your off days, it's not going to result in any difference in the long run, a difference that you would notice in the mirror or in the gym. So just ignore things like that. Is macro counting necessary when building muscle? Yes and no. It is necessary to get adequate protein if you want to optimize muscle growth. But all you need to shoot for is about one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. So if you're overweight and you're looking to lose weight, shoot for a gram of protein for that target body weight. If you're a skinny guy and you're looking to add weight, shoot for a gram of protein per target body weight. That's about it. And give or take, 20, 30 grams of protein. It doesn't need to be super, super high for optimal protein for growth. But when it comes to carbs and fat, it doesn't really matter. Um, very low carb is not optimal for muscle growth. A little more carbs can help with muscle growth, but if you've got fat to lose, a really easy way to cut out a huge chunk of your calories and an easy way to get into a calorie deficit is to reduce carbohydrates. But when it comes to macronutrients, the most important thing is getting adequate protein. The carbs and fats, they don't make much of a difference. What makes the biggest difference is your training stimulus. Are you training effectively? Are you providing your body the stimulus to grow muscle? That's what matters. The diet doesn't matter nearly as much when it comes to building muscle. The diet matters entirely when it comes to losing fat and enhancing your appearance. But what most people are missing is the stimulus. And if you wanna learn the stimulus, click the link in the description, go to mygoldenerasystem.com, download my golden era system. This is gonna teach you the proper stimulus so you stop worrying about macronutrients, diet, and all this other nonsense when the truth is you're probably missing an effective workout. And this will teach you an effective workout. And remember, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more evidence-based training videos. See you guys next time. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at underscore J underscore Vincent so you can be involved and engaged in these Q&As live.